Good day, everyone. I am Dr. Maria Wilma Toral de Mapili from the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital. And on behalf of my co-authors, I will be presenting our recently published study entitled The Efficacy and Safety of Nirsevimab for the Prevention of RSV Infection Among Infants, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. I have no disclosures to make for this study. Respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality among infants, with a global incidence of 9.5% and a mortality rate of 2.2%. Despite the high disease burden, the treatment of RSV infection remains mainly supportive in most clinical settings with oxygen or ventilatory support and nutritional upbuilding serving as the cornerstone of management. Consequently, there is currently no recommendation regarding which drugs can be used for the treatment of RSV-associated lower respiratory tract infection, or LRTI. Despite the lack of evidence regarding its treatment, recently, there is a growing body of evidence regarding the efficacy and safety of monoclonal antibodies for the prevention of RSV infection among infants and young children. Palivizumab and motavizumab have been shown to prevent RSV infections and hospitalizations in various randomized trials. However, motavizumab was associated with an increase in cutaneous hypersensitivity reactions in recipients, and this led to the Food and Drug Administration not granting licensure. Furthermore, palivizumab is recommended by the American Association of Pediatrics for the prevention of RSV infection. However, these medications are given at monthly intervals for five months before clinical benefit is observed. This dosing schedule makes dropout and non-compliance a problem on top of the medication being rather expensive, costing about 5,000 pounds for its full course. There has to be a cheaper alternative with a single dosing schedule. Nirsevimab is an emerging alternative preventive agent against RSV infection. A recent study involving animal models shows that nirsevimab has higher potency and longer half-life compared to motavizumab and palivizumab. Being administered as a single intramuscular dose, nirsevimab provides a promising alternative to the previously recommended monoclonal antibodies. Hence, the study aims to determine the efficacy and safety of nirsevimab in the prevention of RSV infection among infants. Number one, Efficacy in terms of preventing incidence of medically treated RSV, RSV-related hospitalizations, and any lower respiratory tract infection among infants. And number two, safety in terms of life-threatening events and adverse events of special interest. This study implemented a random effects meta-analysis with the following process flow. After a thorough search from databases and after a screen and eligibility assessment, the final meta-analysis included two randomized controlled trials. The Nersevimab study group trial in 2020 and the Melody trial in 2022. Shown here is a tabulation of the intervention and control of each trial which were similar. The efficacy and safety outcomes were likewise similar. Based on our assessment using the ROB2 tool, the studies were of low risk of bias in all its aspects. Hence, the overall risk of bias of this meta-analysis is low. Using the grade approach, 
The fatal adverse events had a moderate quality of evidence due to inconsistency. The rest of the outcomes had a high quality of evidence. Overall, this meta-analysis had moderate to high quality of evidence. Having said that, these are our findings. Nirsevimab given before the RSV season significantly reduced the risk of medically attended RSV-associated LRTI by 74%. And this was consistent in both studies. In this forest plot, both studies favor nirsevimab and it seems that regardless if the patient or the infant was term or preterm, the benefit of preventing any infection was significant. Moreover, nirsevimab given before the RSV season significantly reduced the risk of hospitalization for RSV-associated LRTI by 76%. It should be noted that the markedly glaring significance in reduction in hospitalization was mostly attributed to the nirsevimab study group trial, which showed an 81% reduction in RSV-related hospitalizations. In addition, it can be noted in this forest plot, the MELODY trial showed no significant reduction in RSV-associated hospitalizations, although with a trend towards benefit. Patients enrolled in the nirsevimab study group trial were all preterm infants, while the MELODY trial enrolled both late preterm and term infants, which could have explained this nuance. This meta-analysis showed that the risk of death and risk of special events were not statistically significant between the two treatment groups. It should also be noted that there was moderate heterogeneity in the fatal adverse events which can be explained by the difference in the study populations of the two studies. Similarly, a certain subgroup of the total population in this meta-analysis were preterm infants were in organ prematurity and rapid development changes affect pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, which put neonates at an increased risk of adverse drug reactions compared to term infants. In conclusion, among infants who were both term and preterm, nirsevimab injection before the RSV season significantly reduced the rates of infection and hospitalization related to RSV. There was no significant difference in terms of adverse events leading to death and special adverse events. Indeed, the use of nirsevimab to prevent RSV infections and hospitalization show its promising potential, but studies on its cost-effectiveness are lacking. In a study by Kiefer and colleagues in 2022, it was estimated using a static model that the universal immunization of all infants with nirsevimab is expected to reduce of around 290,000 RSV medically associated lower respiratory tract infection, roughly 25,000 hospitalizations, and expenditures of 612 million US dollars. We therefore recommend that further studies be done to look into the applicability and cost effectiveness of nirsevimab. The results of this meta-analysis also have implications on basic and graduate medical education. Treatment recommendations are continuously being updated and revised as pulled evidence from relevant studies are established. A recent analytic survey emphasizes that medical textbooks may contain outdated treatment recommendations as there is significant lag time from publication of evidence to incorporation of such evidence into medical textbooks. Mechanisms that ensure access to recent clinical evidence that may influence treatment recommendations among medical students and graduate medical trainees must be in place. Thank you very much for listening.